Hi everyone, it's Tom Cherry Holmes with another entry in the Retro Computing Archaeology series. This time, about a little known next step application called S Book, written by Simpson Garfinkel. The purpose of this video is to give a basic overview of the program itself, but to give a second look to a program that not many may have seen in order to take and figure out what we can learn from it from a user interface perspective and how we can make better applications as a result. Tiny little bit of history about this uh, S-Book was written in 1991 by Simpson Garfinkel, who had uh, recently left at that time the MIT Media Laboratory and uh, to go work at uh, Next World as a senior editor. He decided while he was working there that uh, he wanted an address book or a card file, so to speak, that you know didn't suck and had some smarts behind it. He decided to use his insight to take and make a program that tried to guess the different types of information based on user input instead of having to rigidly put these things into separate fields. And the result is a program that feels very natural. Here we have a Next Step 3.3 environment, and we have SBook over here on the dock. I'm going to click on it to bring it up. Whenever I first log into my Next environment here, I have an address book that comes up that I can instantly use. And this program, uh, despite the, this particular version being written in 1993, has a number of very forward-looking features, such as being able to do search as you type. And to get to an entry very quickly, automatically selecting it if it's the one that you're wanting to get to. Very nice and very effective. But you'll see that the interface itself is really very simple. There's not much going on here. You have a search bar, you have find so that you can click that. You don't really, the irony here is you really don't need to click this because it happens automatically, but it's here to all the same. You have an entry for making a new entry, for deleting an entry, and for going up and down in the entry database here. You also have what is essentially an icon box, which can be used for bringing a particular entry or a selection of entries out into their own file. So for example, if I wanted to take and put these into a separate, uh, into a separate file, I could just as easily come down here into the file manager and I could drag this icon in and create a new address book based on just those entries. But coming back to the main program, we'll hide this for just a moment. Where it starts to get interesting is when we actually take and make a new entry. We create a new entry, it gives us a template here, and this template can actually be changed in preferences, but we'll start typing. And you'll notice this, that as it's typing here, it is actively scanning the input and sorting the input based on the context of what's being entered. I'm entering a name here so it knows, it tries to figure out, okay, we'll try to sort by last name. And it actually does a pretty good job here. It can even handle titles, for example. Uh, this doesn't trick it up, that sort of thing. And at this point, I can start typing in an address. And you'll see that immediately, it figures out that I've typed in an address and it puts an icon right next to it. This entire text area right here is just an open field. It's an open field that is actively being scanned and is placing uh, attrib attributed icons next to each piece of information that it figures out. You can figure out things such as uh, email addresses. It can do, uh, it can handle phone numbers and it can handle phone numbers in any particular format, no matter what they are. And it can even handle international numbers.
it does a pretty good job of figuring out what these types of information are, what these bits and, bits and pieces of information are. And actually, later versions of the program, uh, such as SBook 5, add uh, support for things like web addresses and the like. Not here, though. This is a bit too early for that, but that's okay. And you'll notice the funny thing about this is that all of this is literally being done with um, some, while uh, for the time, complex heuristics, it's really simple compared to, say, present day artificial intelligence, for example. But it's basically taking, uh, like, for example, a good chunk of this is basically written in uh, Lex and uh, Yak for parsing to try and figure out all the bits and pieces of information that could be inside of here. And actually, in point of fact, if you want to take a look at the source code, the source code is actually available in the link on the top right of this video window and in the video information as well. So you can have a look at this. But already we can see that we have the ability to take and put in all sorts of information and have it automatically tagged for us. And not only once, and once it's tagged here, these things are integrated. So I can click on, I can click on the envelope here to quickly make an envelope to print out. Not a problem. I can click on uh, the email address to take and immediately go into next mail to take and print uh, to take and send out an email. I can even dial a particular phone number. And not only that, but we also had the feature that was added here to log calls along with a timer and information to take and send back so that we can you know, keep track of calls that we log to these people. All in all, it was a very, uh, a very uh, well-written program that's made up of a bunch of very small, very simple features with the complexity essentially uh, abstracted out so that uh, the user can basically work at their own pace. I'll go ahead and stop this here. Bam, yes, get out of here. Bam, bam, bam. It creates a program that's very natural, very easy to use. And this is something that I think that we really need to pay attention to. So I'm going to finish this video here, just very quick, with some contemplative points. SBook shows us that the user ultimately needs to decide how to use the program. If the user wants to use SBook to take and put in recipes, they can. If they want to use it for, uh, for putting in uh, technical information, they can. Use it as an ad address book, they can. If they want to combine any of those things, a recipe book with an address book, they can. The program tries to figure out, based on user input, what is input, and tries to help the user along with things that, uh, with things that might help. And this actually comes to point number two, comes from understanding the types of information that we might want to take and filter out and deal with. But simple things don't go too complex. Although I think with the emergence of AI, we can start introducing more complex types of information into programs like this to really make this work well. And this really brings me to the last point here. What is SBook in the end? It's a bunch of small features, but with lots of endless ways to take and connect them. And in this case, simple heuristics take and connect these things together and provide integration paths forward. But I think with the emergence of AI, we can take and really make these simple applications useful tools for people. So with that, I'm going to end the video here. Um, I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this tiny little look into this program that I think needs a lot of attention. I highly recommend any programmers go grab the source code, take a look at it. Let's see if we can port this forward into something uh, like in JavaScript, for example, to take and use uh, for the modern web. I, because I think a lot of people could really find some good use out of it. And with that, I'll leave you here. As always, have fun.